Welcome to Las Vegas. It is UFC 306, Riyadh season, not your UFC. You've got to phrase it all correctly, haven't you? I'm Adam Catterall. Pleasure as always to be in your company as we head towards this fantastic Sean O'Malley, Mirab Divashvili, bantamweight world title fight taking place on Saturday night, of course. Nick Pete's come to join me to give us a little bit of a debrief of everything that we've just witnessed on the press conference. Pomp ceremony in a car park. Luckily, they didn't do it in the high today. It's been 40 degrees here in uh, Las Vegas. Did it around about six o'clock in the evening, so the temperature was absolutely bang on, but the, there was a little bit of fire on the stage, especially with Lazy Boy. Ronaldo Rodriguez, you might not know that name, but you absolutely will do by the end of this couple of weeks that we've had here in, uh, in, in Vegas, heading towards this event, because he absolutely owned that stage, the kid, didn't he? But before you get into him, though, uh -huh. talk to him about the whole kit and caboodle, because look at that setting, man. That's where we're going to be Saturday night, a one-off, a one-of-one one, a special event that the UFC are putting on. First ever sporting event inside Sphere. It's incredible. You know, now we get literally just a couple of days away now from the, from the fights taking place. You've still got a million questions going through your head. How it's going to look, how it's going to feel. We've been now told that the seats are going to be interactive. Each individual person inside the arena is going to have headphones. You can listen to the commentary. That's also to absorb the sound in there as well. Which are going to move. The no, seats are going to move. The seats are going to move when shots land and stuff. Wow. It's going to be insane. As you say, a one of one, never to be done again. But just look at it. The press conference in a car park. There was thousands of people here. Obviously, the whole Mexican heritage side of the of the event itself was being absolutely backed and pushed. And the Mexican fans turned out in force. And the Mexican fighters on stage, they turned it on for those fans. Who caught the attention? Lazy boy. Of course he did. Rocked out in... Camouflage gear, sombrero, right. ripped the shirt open at one point. Yeah. Listen, I speak un poco Espanol, <laughs> a very small amount. You did not need to understand any Spanish whatsoever. It wasn't what he said, it was the way that he said it. Yeah. We've seen enough Scarface films, we've seen enough, we've watched a few episodes of Narcos, we know what we're going on up there. The fella absolutely tore into Ori Osborne. Those guys are kicking off the main card. Yeah. Listen, on paper, I look at that fight and I think to myself that Ronaldo Rodriguez is a heavy favourite. I know he's only been in the UFC for one fight. This is a massive opportunity because he's Mexican. We get all that, but he's a hot prospect. Everybody that we speak to coming out of Central America tell us that this guy is probably going to be the next one. Mm -hmm. And he owned it. He absolutely yeah. turned up like he was that guy today. Yeah, he did, yeah. You know, and that's a big thing for other sporters. Obviously, you've got to do it inside the cage, but it's so important to be able to turn the fans on. It's so important to be able to get fans to engage with you. Yeah. And every single fan that was here today and everybody that watched that press alive from home or is watching it on tape delay will say the same thing. He stole the show. He's the one everyone will go into the night now talking about Lazy Boy, talking about what he said and the impact that he made, which is some feat when you're talking about two flyweights to a kick off the main card up against two championship fights, a people's main event, which is going to be an absolute humdinger as well in the featherweight division. So, yeah, he's been the star of the show, absolutely. But listen, you can't go too far away with Sugar Sean O'Malley, though, as well. He is the guy who's in the main event, and he is the guy that every time I see him, never mind inside the octagon, but outside it as well, I just get these Conor McGregor feelings. There's something about this kid that he's a very, very special fighter, athlete, salesman, persona, and I truly believe UFC could, he could cross over into the main street. Well, we've been looking for that pay-per-view star, haven't we? The one that can push it to a million. Connor's an anomaly. Yeah. Even people like John Jones have struggled. Yeah. Where is that guy? Where is that pay-per-view star that pushes it to the next level? Do you think Sean O'Malley's that guy? Sean O'Malley could absolutely be that guy, yeah, because he handles the crowd so well. Nothing upsets him. You know, he's cool, he's calm, he's calculated. Again, on the microphone and when he's got his fist raised. And that's such a rare quality, you know. You can have all the pieces, you can be the greatest fighter in the world, but if you're not a salesman, if you can't get on that stage and engage with an audience and get people to care, mm. whether they pay to see you win or pay to see you lose, you've got to make people care. Well, Sean O'Malley has this ability to cross over and really bring fans to the sport, and those are the fighters that put on a million people. What did you make of Mirab today? Because he, he got, he got, he's used to getting love. Absolutely, yeah, from everybody, but he but it was, today. No, he was very pro Sean O'Malley. Everybody was here yeah. for Sean. Giving away pink baseball caps prior to the uh, start of media day. There you go, the, old, the sugar baseball cap, there you go. There's dough. There you go. But giving them away, listen, everyone loves a freebie. And that, I think that definitely helped. But yeah, for the first time, and maybe in his old career, Mirab was getting real booze, real, like, you know, 
little bit of animosity from the crowd. And I think that threw him off for a second. You know, his replies, he was like, listen, I'm a cool guy, I'm a good guy, I'm a humble guy. And, you know, he's trying to sell himself as, like, don't pick on me, I'm a nice, I'm a nice person. I just thought the moment got to him a tiny bit. He looked a little bit like a cat in the headlights up there, whereas Sean controlled the room, controlled the noise, pushed it back in his direction, and me, Rab, was a little bit like, what? And I just thought, wow, if that happens inside that cage on yeah. Saturday night when it matters most, if he gets caught in the headlights then, he will get knocked out. When I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, I hope that these fighters have had an opportunity to go inside the cage, inside, whilst it's all fired up before they have to fight. Because yeah. it's a very different setting, very different aesthetics. You don't want to be starstruck. You don't, I'm not talking about starstruck by the fighter that you're fighting, I'm talking about the occasion, the night, and you're thinking, wow, you're gonna get carried away with a movie that we're all gonna watch and get carried away with all the, the, the setting of which he's not then gonna be allowed you to do what you're supposed to do, especially in them world title fights. So I hope they get an opportunity over the next 24 hours or so. Just have a little bit of a walk through of it. Yeah, I think so. I think they would have, the UFC would have showed him visuals or at least. They need to experience it, they need to go in. Of course, and being in the main events, there's a real strong case there to say, listen, you know, if you're kicking off the entire card, it's a hard sell to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get if you're in a title and fight, more, come on, man. Title fight, you want to go, what's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? Because the octagon inside the sphere, which is not made for sports events, it's no. made for concerts. Yeah. It's a one sided banked arena. This is not what the fighters are used to at all. So I think it's imperative, especially for the title fighters, as you say, to get that look, to get that feel, to maybe even just lie in the center of the cage and look up while the visuals are going to go, okay. This is what my this is what my peripheral vision is going to be like. Yeah. If, for instance, I'm on the flat to be back. Listen, the lighting's going to be different. Everything's going to be different in there. The, the, the feel is going to be very, very different. The walkouts, I think they've got to have some dummy runs just to make sure that they're happy with that. Because at the, at the end of the day, the setting's great. We're here celebrating a one of one. As I said right at the start of the show, it is a unique. We're never going to do this again. Yeah. We'll, we'll, the next time we're in Las Vegas with the UFC, we'll be back at the T-Mobile Ballerina. Completely get all that. So the most important thing Away from, the most important thing is the fights. That's what people are tuning in for. You want to see a good fight, don't you? Yes. And you don't want the, the setting and the event to affect the quality of the fight because people are a little bit overawed. So give them as much time as they need just to get comfortable. I'm all right here now. Yeah. Let's rock and roll. Yeah, and I think, listen, thank you. The UFC aren't daft. This is not their thing. No, I know that. We've noticed their first trip to the sphere. So I, I don't envisage any issues. And from what I've seen, from the co-main event up there, Alexa Grasso obviously defending her belt against former champion Valentina Shevchenko, the third fight these girls will have had in succession. First ever female trilogy. Yeah, to try and clear up these, these fights that, you know, the first fight, Grasso took the belt. She was a massive underdog. They rematched, it was a draw, a very controversial draw. The majority of fans and media thought that Valentina Shevchenko should have gone her belt back, which is why we're here for a third time in 15 months or whatever it is. But those girls know each other inside and out. They fought each other nine rounds leading up to this one. So Tough there's, there's going to well. be no feeling out yeah. process in that fight. There's going to be no, mm. oh, wait a minute, one environment to be in here. All they care about is seeing the white of each other's eyes inside that cage and land them one of them on the whiskers. Mm. Um, obviously, now our attention turns towards the official weigh-ins, which is going to take place 9 a.m. Friday morning Vegas time. So that works out at about 5 p.m. UK time when you're watching this. All eyes on Brian Ortega. Yeah, yeah because... The fight with Diego Lopez has been made before. It did not happen because obviously Brian Ortega had issues with the scales. Not only was the fight made a featherweight, but then moved to lightweight prior to the weigh-ins because he was struggling to make weight. But then after he made lightweight, the following morning, actually medically, he wasn't cleared to fight anyway. So there is a lot of eyeballs in him, a lot of pressure on him. There's been a little bit of, you know, naughty pictures going around online, which was from the previous fight. Yeah. Look. He looks he looks old, yeah, 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 yeah. There didn't seem to be anything like that up on the stage today. Once again, those two went for each other. You know, Ortega's an absolute veteran, only lost to the absolute creme de la creme in the weight division. Lopez is this absolute searing talent. Brazil via Mexico. That's got the greatest mullet in all the fight sports. But truly just looks unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. Four wins, three first round knockouts, three performance bonuses in the last, what is it, nine months, ten yeah, months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible. Can't wait, man. I know we're on the outside of this, and I keep, well, my neck has changed again. We're on the outside of this fantastic um, auditorium, Colosseum. Well, it's going to be, I don't even know what, it, what we're classing it as. It's just going to be, it's going to be absolutely, 
It's going to be absolutely crazy. We're going to be back here in this car park tomorrow for the ceremonial weigh-ins, and then it's all on finite. So make sure you like and subscribe the TalkSport MMA YouTube channel. We'll be getting you closer to that weigh-in tomorrow, so make sure you come back for that. Hopefully, we'll be speaking to some runners and riders that are connected to the fight, and there's a lot of famous faces in town, obviously, because they want to experience this as well. And then on Saturday night, all eyes on that first, first fight where Howell Rosas Jr. kicking off the event. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Thanks for joining me on the platform, mate. We'll catch you next time.